and welcome back to Sparrow's Joy. <clears throat> Today I'm going to talk to you about this piece titled Joe's Backyard. <clears throat> because the story behind it is there was somebody that lived there and this was their backyard. And they had suggested, hey, this looks like a really nice, you know, it's a really nice overview of the mountains and the neighboring field and barn. So why don't you go ahead and maybe paint the view that I have from my backyard? And I said, okay. And took a picture of it. But when I got home to look at the picture, I noticed that the sky, which is which was all this part and in the photograph was white. It was like a bright white. You couldn't see anything. Because the way it was kind of hazy that day, nothing was showing up. You couldn't tell what color the sky was. I mean, it was kind of hazy even down through here a little bit. And I'm like, bummer. Because the sky was so pretty. You know, there there's so many things you can do with the sky. And I'm like, man. Yeah. <laughs> and so, instead of being bummed out about it, I decided to <clears throat> go ahead and paint the sky. So what I did for the sky, instead of just making it bright white, <clears throat> I went outside to my yard and noticed how the skies were here at my house. And noticed that the clouds were just kind of doing their own thing. And I put some blue, mixed some blue and white and got like the lighter blue colors. And then I like to put in, mix a little bit of the red with white to get like this hint of a red kind of off in the distance look. And then with the white, I believe, if I remember correctly, that I finger painted that white. And what, what I mean by that is that I take some white on my paintbrush, kind of dab it in different spots, and then I take my fingers and I just kind of smear it around a little bit to kind of give, because not all clouds are white fluffy cotton ball looking things. They're, they kind of spread out and they stretch and sometimes the most unique skies and the more realistic skies that I have are done for me just kind of putting a little bit of color on there and then just kind of swirling it around with my finger and then kind of stepping back and looking at it and seeing, yeah, that looks like a, <laughs> what a sky would look like and with the clouds rolling in and things like that. So that's how <clears throat> I got that. And I got some cloud, uh, clouds, <laughs> some cows of different colors because that particular field had cows of different colors in it. So there's my cows. <clears throat> then it had a little red fence down here that kind of divided the property of what was supposed to be the backyard and the neighboring uh, farm. So that's why that's got that there. And the little, I guess the watering hole for the cows. I'm not real sure what the big mud hole by the fence it was unless where they I guess take a tractor or something through there it's made of mud puddle I'm not sure but I thought it was neat and you know it's part of the picture so I wanted to add it in <clears throat> this picture is about 14 inches tall and about 11 inches wide and I've already got the um, wire framing on the back but it's only a half an inch thick so some places might ask for a frame on it and that's okay because I've got, I went on ahead and added the backing, but if I was to put it in an exhibit or if somebody was to buy it and they wanted to frame around it, you know, I'll find a frame for it. Um, but this is just kind of where it's at currently and I do have the sides painted and everything because it kind of, in case it doesn't go in a frame, it would be ready to hang as is. And that's what I'm trying to do with all my pieces is get them to where if they don't have a frame, if they're wide enough, because there are some canvas panels that aren't quite wide enough, so you need them in a frame. But for the most part, I try to go ahead and paint that to where if it doesn't want, you know, doesn't need a frame or if somebody doesn't want to frame it, you know, it looks fine like that. Um, this piece was done. It was finished uh, May 29th of 2020. Because one of the things that I do is not only do I try to sign 
somewhere on the canvas. In this case, I signed in the bottom corner. But I also put my signature on the back, the title of whatever the painting is, and the date, in this case, May 29th, 2020, that day that is put on the back of my canvas. That is the day that I put the last paint stroke. Like, the whole, like, okay, um, I painted it. I feel like it's complete. It is good. I'll let it dry. Just in case there's a little bit of extra grass or something that's still a little wet, I'll sign it tomorrow. And then, like, the next day when the paint um, is going to dry, because I like to give it a full day, just to make sure um, it's good and dry before I sign it. And then after that, once that's signed, so whatever day it is that I signed the canvas, <clears throat> that's the day that I write on the back to know that, okay, everything is complete. It's ready to go. And so that's why if you see any of my paintings and they have certain dates on the back, that's what that day means. That means that the, it was completed, it was signed on that day. So that way, people can look back on some of my other pieces. Like I have another piece here. Um... That was done 7 13 2020. You know, it's a smaller piece. This is the back of it. I will tell you the story of this one on a later day. Because uh, it's a much smaller piece. But that way people can look back. And if I do different um, backyards. Or if somebody. that This particular individual that lived here. They were getting ready to move to another location. And they were wanting. They were like, that. you can do that one. That way you can have. You know a backyard to paint but i might have you paint my house that i'm moving into to keep or a different item to keep uh, because they were moving they thought this one would be better for me to possibly sell um because of where they were moving and everything but they did like the idea and they were the ones that gave me the idea to paint the view uh from their backyard and so I appreciate them very much because they've been great supporters of my art and blessed me throughout the years with different ideas or with canvases and different things. And I appreciate them so much. Um, but this is just the story of this particular piece. And I will try to add, I've got more canvases than I have videos made up. So I will try to do my best on keeping current or keeping, um, trying to get all my canvases painted or not painted excuse me video so that everybody can understand the story behind the pieces and not just see it as a painting of oh I, I don't get it because sometimes that happens sometimes you look at an artist's work and you don't understand it or there's pieces like the Mona Lisa that people don't understand why it's so famous or how he painted it that way or why he might have painted it with the background the way it is and so this is just my way of sharing so people can kind of understand where I'm coming from when it comes to my veins. And I hope you have a blessed day. And until next time.